You're listening to Saturday Breakfast on ABC Radio Canberra. 250 years ago, the Endeavour sailed along the east coast of Australia and the untold stories of First Australians and Captain James Cook have been on show for quite a few months now at the National Museum of Australia in an exhibition exploring their views from both the shore and the ship. I wonder if you saw that exhibition. It made a huge impression on me. That exhibition is part of a big investment by the National Museum of Australia that's not only dedicated to the commemoration of that anniversary 250 years ago, it's also part of a much bigger cultural connections initiative. And part of that is a songwriting and recording program that's been really busy and productive on the south coast of New South Wales. And there's lots of different collaborators. I was lucky enough to speak to three of them. While Bunga Narago artist Cheryl Davidson, Lara Crew from Four Winds near Bermagui, and also Dr Shannon Palmer from the National Museum of Australia. And I began by asking Dr Palmer how this collaboration first began. So the funding for the Cultural Connections Initiative came about as a part of the broader Australian government's suite of measures to commemorate the 250th anniversary of the Endeavour voyage sailing along the East Coast in 1770. And there was $3.6 million that the museum dedicated towards creating the Cultural Connections Initiative. There's actually two components to that initiative. There's the Encounters Fellowship Program and there's the Cultural Connections Program. And so through the Cultural Connections Program, that program is about supporting First Nations cultural practitioners through employment positions and professional development and also to support community-led cultural work. And so we established 10 partnerships as a part of that program There was a big research sort of process that that started it all off and then we established partnerships with 10 local organisations. Why did you choose Four Winds down in the Bermagui region as one of your partners? So Four Winds um, is a really well-established music and arts organisation down on the south coast that had a great track record of working with uh, First Nations communities down on the south coast and were really keen to deepen that (coughs) engagement. With us is Lara Crew from Four Winds. She's the Create and Inspire producer. Lara, tell me more about that connection that you have with the First Nations community along the south coast. Four Winds is situated just nine kilometres south of Bermagui. Beautiful setting in nature, surrounded by spotty gums, just near Kataji, um Bridge and, and Beach. We have this unique site. It has always lent itself to involving Indigenous people. It's situated between the two significant mountains of Ewan country, which is Mumbala Mountain and Gulaga Mountain. And people often refer to that location as having even a song line pass through it. So it always felt right and we always tried to connect with our um, traditional custodians and involve them in our programming and showcase their work. Of course, we were limited because we didn't actually have an Aboriginal person on staff. And the partnership with the National Museum of Australia basically funded and enabled us to do that. And we are not looking back. We've put Cheryl Davison in that position. She has just excelled in it and our connections have deepened and the work that has been produced is amazing, like many people will see this weekend. But... We've decided also to keep that position. So we needed that kickstart and that support from the National Museum, which we got. And now we've got this wonderful further connection with our First Nations people. There's a wonderful legacy of a project like this. Joining us also in the ABC Canberra studio is Cheryl Davidson from the Four Winds Aboriginal creative producer position, but also from the South Coast. Welcome, Cheryl. Tell me more about your country and why you wanted to be involved in this cultural connections program. My country is the South Coast, Yuan country, um, and... I'm connected to just about every every per, every Aboriginal person on the South Coast. Cheryl, what was the attraction of the role with Four Winds? What was your expectation of the role? My expectation of the role? Um, what were you hoping to achieve? Well, I've always been a really creative person, um, but I'm a visual artist and... When I seen the advertisement for the job, I thought I could have a crack at that. You know, I can try because I I have all these other ideas about, you know, my culture and how how it could be 
presented. But they were only ever ideas, you know. So I did apply for the job and and it has been learn as you go, really, because the music world is a whole different ball game to visual arts. But yeah, everything everything was new. So I, I wanted to just uh do things with the community that I thought would be easy, you know, like getting a choir <laughs> starting a choir from the from the from the from the you know, from that was the first project that I wanted to um get off the ground. And was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. <laughs> getting a choir pulling a choir together is not easy. <laughs> It's really like herding cats <laughs> um, because, you know, everyone has to have the same passion as you and, you know, getting community people to come on a regular basis to come and sing and take their time to, to really come and do something for themselves. It was, it was hard. At the centre of this is reclaiming your language, the Duraga language. Yeah. Tell me about your language and is it something that you grew up speaking? Well, all of the community spoke some of the Duraga language, but, you know, little bits and pieces. But, yeah, we'd, it's not spoke, it's not spoke, it hasn't been spoken fluently for maybe over 100 years. How did you go about finding your language again, learning your language again? Well... I, I first started speaking about learning our language and putting writing songs because when we first started the choir, we were actually just um, covering songs from other musicians. And, of course, Lou Bennett's Titter, the Titters was songs that we liked to sing, um, songs from um, the movie... The Sapphires, <laughs> great, you know, we heard them film. sing these beautiful songs in language and I thought, well, why can't we do that, you know? Um, and it was, you know, that was kind of what got the idea of writing our own songs in language. Let's hear one of those songs that you wrote in language. It's On Our Way. <laughs> ABC Radio Canberra, you are listening to On Our Way, a song sung in the Duraga language. And with us is Cheryl Davidson, the Four Winds Aboriginal creative producer, heavily involved in writing this beautiful piece of music and performing it. Cheryl, give us an insight into what it was like writing that song with Dr Lou Bennett from Titters. That their song was written when we really knew very little about our language, how to speak it, how to pronounce it, how to spell it, you know. We actually went into a workshop with Dr Lou with resources that we just pulled out of books off our, you know, off our shelves at home, stuff that had been stuffed away in cupboards um, before the dictionary had come out. So... Um, We were learning that to write our songs from, you know, little bits and pieces and and paper that was, we just all saved. Everyone came to the workshop with those, with those words and Lou got us all together and at the start we thought, maybe we can't, we can't do this, we can't, we can't create these songs from a language that we don't really know but... Um, Lou had actually pulled us together and sat us all down 
and asked us what it is we wanted to sing about. So that song was about family and it's about us women being together and being out on the beach with our digging sticks, you know, thinking about our our um, old aunties and mothers and um, being out there hunting and gathering and fishing with the kids, going for a swim and watching um, Mirida fly over, catching a fish, you know. So that was, that's what that song is about. Cheryl, how does it feel to sing in your language, the language of Duraga? It's very emotional, yeah. It's such a joy to be able to talk in my ancestors' language, you know, something that we thought we'd lost forever. And um, sorry, I'm getting emotional now, but, <laughs> but um, you know, when we sing those songs, we are channeling our old people. And uh, it was uh, it was very, you know, it was very spiritual, the whole time the whole experience, because from start to finish, I just feel that my ancestors put me in the right place at the right time to meet the right people to do what I'm doing today. It sounds to me, Cheryl, like you've got plenty more songs to be writing and recording and sharing with your extended family and network, particularly along the South Coast. Yeah, but we still have a lot of work to do as far as the language go. Um, I learnt teaching it. Um, we write the songs. We've got some really brilliant young people involved in the choir that's writing songs nearly every day now. Um, and we have some really good friends, the um, Candelo musicians that are helping us uh, with, you know, uh, creating the, the music for those songs. What's your hope for the project going yeah. forward? So. My hope for the project is to really awaken the language and for everyone to be speaking the language again. And, um, you know, when I say that there's, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, you know, uh, currently I'm doing a language course with Trish Ellis um, and to really understand the language, you need to you need to do that that work as well. You need to learn how to use that dictionary and the pronunciations, they all have to be correct. It's a wonderful achievement, Cheryl. Congratulations to you and all the people involved. And also to you, Lara Crew, Four Winds Create and Inspire producer. It sounds like there's a much longer legacy for this project going forward and, and hopes of expanding this work further in southern New South Wales. Yes, that's right. We, um, we are hoping to start three choirs along the coast, one in Ulladulla and one in Nowra and to enlarge in the one that we have in Bermagui. Um, there are people champing at the bit to join the choir and the choir has been so successful. They have gigs like every month, three a month. It just doesn't stop. There's so many community events that love to hear the words, both non-Indigenous and Indigenous people. It is very emotional, as Cheryl was saying, even for the audience. Um, both times that we've presented the whole show with all the um, songs from the choir and all the songs from the Candelo artists, there are people in tears, there are people recognising how significant it is to return a language that has been lost. Asleep. Asleep, I beg your pardon, <laughs> Cheryl. Um, and the thing is that... Uh, more people want to join it. But because we have these performances all the time, we can't get the rest of them up to speed across the, all the words. So we're, we're going to now concentrate on that, getting more community members involved. And we're going to do that um, in Aladala and in Nowra. Shannon Palmer, Community Engagement and Partnerships Manager with the National Museum of Australia. What a success this particular partnership has been. I mean, we're incredibly proud of all of the Cultural Connections partnerships. There are 10 um, and they actually range from the tip of Cape York, um, the very top of far north Queensland there, all the way down to uh, Gunnaku and I country in Gippsland in Victoria. Um, and there are a range of different projects that have emerged out of these partnerships. 
we're incredibly proud of our part, the partnership with the Four Winds. I think it's incredibly exciting for the museum to be involved in a grassroots project such as this. And I think it's extremely exciting to think of museums as community collaborators in this way. Um, this program really is reimagining the role that museums can play in our society um, and that collaborating with community organisations, um, you know, First Nations people and communities on the ground and supporting work that is really important to them, I think is, um, is a really exciting thing for, for the museum to be a part of. Shannon, Lara and Cheryl, thank you all for joining me in the ABC Canberra studio and telling us a little bit about this incredibly exciting collaboration. Very best of luck at the sold-out concert tonight in Canberra. There are still tickets for the concert tomorrow in Canberra, but you'll need to be quick. So we've got, uh, there's a two-part event, Cultural Connections, Sharing Stories and Songs from UN Country. Sharing Stories from UN Country is on at the museum this evening. Um, and that's going to, there's going the choir is going to perform and there'll be a documentary screening. Tickets are actually sold out for that this evening. And then there's a free performance at the museum tomorrow that everyone is more than welcome to, which is Songs from UN Country, which is the Jinnamilaga Choir performing with the Mujin Girls, which is Friends in Durga. Um, and that's going to start at 11am tomorrow. And I've been very fortunate to see this performance down at the Easter Festival um, and was, was blown away. It's really something else. So I encourage everyone to come along and see it for themselves. And you just got a thumbs up from Cheryl, I think, <laughs> over your interpretation of the language. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank again. you. You're listening to Saturday Breakfast on ABC Radio Canberra. 